I'm joined by Lori Corey, Corley, that is, and Lori is the Deputy Director with the East Alabama Commission Area Agency on Aging. Good morning, Lori. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. It's Good. a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Well, Lori, let's tell our, our share with our viewers who may be unfamiliar with your organization. Briefly tell us about it. Well, the Area Agency on Aging is um, required by the state to provide services for older adults who live in our 10 county area. And our area covers from um, the center area in, um, and then we all go all the way down almost to Auburn. So we have 10 counties that we serve. Okay, so within those 10 counties, what services do you offer? Well, we provide a various range of services for older adults and their caregivers, and that's an important piece to remember is that we help many, many caregivers. We provide respite services for people who are caring for their older parent in their home so that they can get a break and take care of themselves because we know that people who have a break of at least four hours a week of caregiving are able to caregive for their parent or grandparent longer and keep them out of an institution. We also offer our Medicaid waiver services for people who are eligible to live in a nursing home um, or assisted living, but they um, want to live at home and remain at home. We can provide those services for them in their home so that they don't have to leave their home. Also, we provide all the senior nutrition programs in our 10 county area um, that include home delivered meals, um, which may be frozen meals for a week, and also through our congregate meal sites at our over 30 senior centers within our 10 counties. Okay, that's a lot of work going on in your organization. Tell us, do the individuals of those senior citizens have to possess a certain level of income to partake? It depends. Some of our uh, some of our programs, which I only mentioned a very small, a minute amount of them, but some of them do require um, a person to be a low income or a lower middle income individual. But it also depends on uh, what the cost of their medications are, how much they're spending on the doctor every month. Um, so there are a lot of variables, and usually we can help everyone uh, with some kind of service through our organization. Okay. Um, caring for an aging parent, uh, that responsibility is something that we uh, don't ex often expect, but we know at some point that may happen. So when we talk about support and understanding, oftentimes the term power of attorney enters the picture. Please tell us and, and tell us what we need to do. Well, a power of attorney can be many different things. It can be just for your medical care. Um, it can be just for your financial piece of your life. A power of attorney gives another person um, the ability to take care of your business when you're unable to do so. Perhaps you're incapacitated for a short time or perhaps it's a long period, but you can verbally revoke that at any time as well. I'm not an attorney, but we do have attorneys who work in our office and they would be happy to assist you by calling our 1-800-AGE-LINE number. That's 1-800-AGE-LINE and we can connect you with our, our attorneys um, to, to help you navigate that system. Okay, and I assume those attorneys would also be able to help you with a living wheel, uh, advanced directive. Yes, and that's a very important piece for families to have. Um, one of the best gifts a parent can give their child, I believe, is that they tell them what they want when it comes to the end of their lives because then their children don't have to make the decisions for them. And so we really encourage all of our older adults to make those decisions, put those things in writing in an advance directive or living will so that your family knows what you want and they can carry out your wishes. And that prevents a lot of conflict between families as well when it comes to the, at the end of a person's life. Absolutely. Lori, but starting that conversation isn't always easy. Any recommendations on how to tackle it? Well, we always encourage families, if there's something comes up like um, mom or dad doesn't need to drive anymore, we always encourage them to talk to the doctor about that and get the doctor sometimes to be the bad guy or <laughs> bad guy or lady um, in that situation because um, a, a parent doesn't want their child telling them what to do. And they, they look for other figures of authority to do that. And so we encourage that conversation to begin perhaps at the doctor's office or at the therapist's office. But also just having an open line of communication with the parent and, and not um, instructing them what to do, but having the conversation about what would you like? How can I best take care of you? Um, 
what are the things that you would like for me to do for you and what are your boundaries? What do you not want me to do for you? Um, are there other people who you would like to involve in your care? So we can, we can help with those conversations as well. We do in-home education for families who are caregiving while providing respite, but we also have a great caregiver education program. So we can help with those conversations and get those started and then point you in the right direction if you need more specific assistance. And Lori, sometimes I'll hear senior citizens and say they had to make a choice between uh, paying for a service or buying their medications. So your organization helps with prescriptions? We do. We have a, a vast m uh, amount of opportunities for people to get prescription drug assistance. Um, it's called our Senior Rx program, and it's not for only people um, who are 65 and older. We have people who um, perhaps have a uh, who are younger who need assistance and we can help with that and just as a reminder our agency is not only for those who are aging but also those who are disabled so we can we can we serve children even one and two years old who have a specific disability through our Medicaid waiver program. Okay. What about transportation for those who are homebound? Does your organization provide those services as well? We do. Many, I'm sure many of the people here see our ACT um, buses running uh, throughout the city and throughout the counties. We do provide a, a lot of opportunities for transportation. In our rural areas, we know that is one of the biggest barriers to people getting the health care that they need. And so we try to do as much as we can in that area. Do you know if there are um, places where people can get adult daycare services if that uh, caregiver needs to step out for a period of time? Is there a um, service available where they can take their, their parent or the senior citizen that they're caring for? Adult daycare is not as prevalent here in East Alabama as we would love to see it. It's a great program. We're working hard to try to advocate for more payors for adult daycare. Um, one of the things that I would say to someone is call our agency and see if we can help you find something in your area. It's rare at this point though, um, but we'll, we're working on that. Uh, senior centers are a great uh, opportunity for people as well, even though um, they are not able to care for medical needs. But also our respite care services that we provide um, in the home can help caregivers get that break that is much needed. Okay, so did I hear you say the community centers? Yes, our okay. senior centers um, throughout all of our 10 counties can assist in finding something or someone maybe that can help with that. Okay, let's go back for just a minute when the senior citizens or the aging parent are living in their homes and, and oftentimes they're able to stay there, but there's some cases where they need to move out, maybe need assistance, and they mm -hmm. just don't recognize that. But let's talk about those dangers or warning signs that we should look for when it's time to make that decision. Well, one of the first things we're looking for is just in-home safety, fall hazards, um, preventing falls, um, making sure that everyone is taking their medicine appropriately, um, setting pers a person up for success in being able to take their medicine themselves. Um, falls, dementia is a really big uh, problem and very prevalent. Um, and when people begin to have memory problems, it's not that you forget your key, you, you forget your keys, because we all do that. But if you forget, you have your key in your hand and you don't know what to do with it. Um, one of the first things that people do with dementia or Alzheimer's disease do is lose their sense of smell. So that's why they eat rotten food. Um, they maybe don't pay attention if something's burning on the stove, they can't smell it. So that's one of the things that we're looking at. Um, also, if they are, um, have a chronic disease like diabetes or congestive heart failure, and they're needing more care than what you're able to provide at home. Um, we, we can help with that transition. Um, we have people who um, can work with us, people to find what they need as far as nursing home or assisted living care. But one of the main things that we want to do through our agency is keep a person at home as long as possible and put all the supports in the home that are available to keep them at home as long as, as, long as possible. One, because it's healthier, and two, because it's a lot cheaper. Well, you've provided us with some very valuable information, and I know there's more. You mentioned it. Oh, we yes. just, just highlighted some of the services. But if individuals want to know more, is there a contact information website that we can yes. gain more? Yes. Um, 
please visit our website at eastalabamaaging.org. And then also, any phone calls, um, wherever you are in the state of Alabama, you can call 1-800-AGE-LINE. That's 1-800-AGE-LINE, and it will connect you with your area agency on aging in your area. So if you live in Birmingham and you work here um, and you want to find something in Birmingham, just call that 1-800-AGE-LINE, and they'll be able to connect you with the area agency in your, age, in your area. Okay, Lori, thank you so much thank you. for joining us this morning. I know this information is going to help many of those who may be in our viewing audience. I certainly hope so. That's what we're here for. Thank you. Appreciate thank you. it.